What is up YouTube? Today I just want to do a basic, super relaxed, chilled vlog update on my contest prep. I just finished training. It's Friday today. Towards the end of the week, I still got one more training session to do tomorrow, which is going to be legs. But um, just chilling out right now. Just drank some coconut water, had some a post-workout meal, and I uh, thought I would update you guys and just kind of also enjoying this view. It's actually incredible such a great backdrop if it would focus but that's all right that's not the focus right now the focus right now is my contest prep update so today i actually met a really cool guy at the gym and this is what i love about contest prep for number one and just the gym community for number two is that people are very welcoming people are very friendly the bodybuilding community in general is pretty pretty friendly pretty welcoming for the most part and i kind of go out of my way these days to communicate with people who are competing as well. But just today at the gym, a guy stopped me. He was like, man, are you competing? And I was like, yeah, I am actually doing a few shows or whatever. He says, bro, you look incredible. Like you're the, you have the best physique here in this whole gym right now. And um, I stopped and I looked around and I was just like, humbly, this guy is actually right. The gym was busy and there was no one else in really, really good shape. Um, because no one else is competing, right? So no one else, as far as I'm aware, well, no one this morning that was there um, was in contest prep shape, but it was cool because we connected um, on Instagram or whatever. And um, it's great to get that feedback, that positive feedback, positive recognition from other people. Uh, some of my female friends are always like, oh, like it's, it's actually cool. Like guys will stop and talk to you about your physique or how strong you are or your lifestyle or whatever else. Uh, instead of, you know, talking you down or being like jealous or anything like that. Um, but that was really cool. And he said to me, like, we to I told him what competitions I was doing and stuff like that. And he was somewhat surprised that I'm actually drug free. So, you know, haven't taken any anabolic steroids or performance enhancing drugs ever in my life. Um, so he was surprised by that and he was like, what's the secret? And I, you know, I spoke about dedication and consistency and stuff like that. And I said, bro, to be honest, like, you know all the basic bullshit. You know the consist consistency, dedication, following the diet and stuff like that. But the real secret, the real, real secret is 20 years of training. So 20 years of being very consistent over a long period, like 20 years is a long time, right? So I haven't competed in seven years, but I've been on this grind for 20 years, going to the gym for 20 years, doing shit right for 20 years. So it's a long time to have a lifestyle and obviously you build a, a great foundation early on in that period of time. And you have period uh, phases in that period of time where you compete and you get shredded and then you gain and you bulk and you do powerlifting, and you do other sports and you come back to bodybuilding again. So there's gonna be like different trends, but you're still weight training consistently and eating a good, good amount of protein and having a general healthy lifestyle across the board. So it's consistency over time is the secret more than anything else. Now I could say, hey, like I've got the secret with the optimal training programming, optimal nutritional strategies, stress management, um, sleep, habit formation, things like that. As a coach, I can get you where you wanna be. That's true. But it comes down to consistency, dedication, and discipline. Those three things are gonna make all the difference. Uh, but that was definitely motivating to get that positive feedback uh, this morning. Uh, my session went really well. This time last week, I trained in the afternoon and I was exhausted. It was my fifth low day of calories and I was just so wrecked. I felt like a zombie. I was in the gym. I saw some friends training legs and I was like, man, I feel sorry for you guys. I was doing upper body. I was like, I feel sorry for you. Um, but then I followed that up with two refeed days uh, the, you know, the days after and I felt much better, but based on how I felt last Friday, I thought to myself, you know what, get up earlier, get some food in earlier, um, tick off some boxes and then go to the gym. And I've actually only done 3000 steps today so far. It's about 10 AM right now. So I'm saving my steps for a little bit later in the day, just today, because last week, I was really exhausted because I got my steps done early and things like that. And in contest prep, we do have to manage these things. We've got to think about, okay, well, I've got to get 12,000 steps across this day. What's the best approach to do this to minimize fatigue, but still get the output done? I've got to get my weight training done. I've got to work with my coaching clients as well. 
might have other tasks or things I need to do throughout the day. So how do we organize this day to get the best out of each thing across the day? Now, weight training obviously is going to be my main focus because that's going to retain my lean muscle. It's going to help to, you know, obviously encourage fat loss as well. And it's bodybuilding that I'm competing in. So that is priority. Second priority is going to be managing the step count or getting to the step count by the end of the day. Um, and they're the two physical activity things that take the most demand. Now, if I woke up early and I smashed out 12,000 steps all at once, did some posing practice as well, which is physically exhausting as well, did a bunch of client work, which is, which is mentally exhausting, and then I went to the gym, absolutely I'd feel destroyed. That's kind of what I did last Friday, to be honest. So today I was smarter and I got it done ahead of time. But anyways, speaking to that guy this morning and asking what's the secret, etc., and you know, he could tell that I'm gonna compete and stuff, which was good, it was great. But it also made me think, okay, I think I should jump on YouTube and do a vlog update on contest prep, but also just do like an outline of what my prep has been like. So people understand, people get a better idea of what is involved in a contest prep um, in the most simple way possible. Hopefully I can explain it. And you get a better idea of the insights of, you know, what the process is, because it's not really that challenging. But it is, it's, it's demanding for sure. It's demanding in so many different ways, but the actual structure of it is not too crazy. So I started my contest prep, I would say right at the end of October. All right, so it's quite a long time ago now, probably just over 20 weeks now. And the first phase, I was about 98 to 99 kilograms. And the first phase of prep, I decided to push hard because I've got more body fat to lose. So that body fat that I've got to lose is kind of like a uh, protective cushion in regards to protecting my muscle mass because you know, if energy is reduced through a calorie deficit, I'm still weight training and I'm tracking my step count, your body will just utilize fat for energy basically and start to use that. And as your fat stores come down, then you start to compromise your lean tissue and you start to lose some muscle mass, right? If your protein intake is not enough, if you're not weight training, you're not thinking about these things or you're going out and drinking alcohol a lot, then yeah, you're probably gonna lose some lean muscle in that first phase as well. But when you have more body fat to lose, you can most definitely uh, push a bit harder, be a little bit more aggressive with that calorie deficit. So typically I would be eating around 3,000 to 3,500 calories if I'm tracking to maintain optimal health, train well, look good, feel like I'm in good shape. At the start of my prep, I wasn't really tracking too consistently. I had just come back from a holiday, multiple holidays actually, and I was a bit fluffy to be honest. I was definitely a bit smoother than what I would prefer to be. So I was around 98 to 99 kilos when I started this prep, and I decided, okay, let's push hard. So let's just assume that I was eating 3,200 calories as a rough estimate of where I was to maintain that weight. I started my calorie deficit at 2300 calories right so that's quite a big reduction in total energy intake and also by being consistent with that number meant that there was no highs and lows there was no dips or, or shifts in the average the weekly average was 2300 calories across the week because some people will start a diet but then they have refeeds they have relaxed meals or cheat meals or whatever they go out and party and stuff and then their average for the week ends up being a lot higher than their target number right so I, I wasn't tracking prior to prep start, so maybe, no, I was tracking some days, but I wasn't pushing for, you know, a consistent number. So 2,300 calories is where I started my prep, which is on the low end, but it was also calculated for me, actually. And I started with 10,000 steps as well, just to build some routine and some habit. And I saw my weight trending down, obviously, which was great in the first, first phase. And then I pushed my step count up to 12,000 steps for a while. And then I pushed it up to 15,000 steps for a while. So that first phase of contest prep was 2,300 calories the whole way through and just increasing my output through step count. And that feels like forever ago now. But the reason why I pushed early like that, again, because I had more body fat to lose, but also because I knew I was going overseas for New Year's Eve for a week where I would be partying, having fun, and I wanted to still be able to do that. So I thought if I start my prep early, work a bit harder early, I can actually have a bit of a little, a one week diet break, a bit of a relaxed approach, um, you know, with, with all my friends and stuff overseas, which is what I did. So pushed hard in that first phase, and um, I think I got down to about 
Hmm, I think I got down to about 92 kilos, about there, about 91, 92 kilos by December, by pretty much, yeah, around Christmas time or so. And I didn't have to change my calories at all. My calories just stayed the same. And then I had Christmas, which was a relaxed period of time. So I had two or three days of relaxed eating there. Then I had um, my diet break overseas. I went to Bali for New Year's Eve. It was amazing, had a great time. And then from that point on, from January 1st or January 3rd or so, I was like, okay, now it's time to be a little bit more consistent and push a little bit harder. Did not reduce my calories at all. 2,300 calories was still the number. I maintained my step count at 15,000 steps per day. And I was back to being consistent and training hard. And after a period of time, my body fat levels started to dip even more. I brought in some refeed days, so some higher calorie days higher carbohydrate days mostly and I was doing that once or twice a week but not too often because I had my birthday coming up in February so for my birthday I wanted to again just enjoy the the night go to dinner have a widespread of food order everything share plates whatever eat everything have a few tequilas and live life love life so I did that and for my birthday I think it was down to like 80 88 kilos or something like that, which was the perfect place to be. And then I went to, right after my birthday, I went to Bali for three weeks for a bit of a training camp, a bit of a training focus. And while I was in Bali, I decided to push a little bit harder. And I had some periods of time where I was at 2,100 calories or so for about 10 days. And then I did another diet break at around 3,000 calories for five days, along with a deload with my training. So as you can see, my nutrition hasn't changed that much over time. It was 2,300 calories for a long time. There was a diet break, then it was 2,300 calories again, and then it was um, my birthday, and then it was 2,100 calories or so, and then there was another diet break and deload. The thing is though, as my body weight has come down, the the size or the magnitude of the deficit has reduced as well. So early on, I was 99 kilos. 2,300 calories is a huge calorie deficit, right? And I got all this body fat off. But at my current weight, 2,300 calories is still a deficit. It's just a smaller deficit because I weigh less. I, I, you know, my total body weight is less. My meta metabolic rate has reduced. So I went from a big deficit to a smaller deficit. And as I've done that, my weight has come down as well. I haven't had to go from a certain calorie amount all the way down, dropping calories as I go, because I started low and I've just maintained that and the body fat has come down along with that. And I haven't really hit a sticking point. I haven't really hit a point where I'm like, oh shit, like I'm not making any progress, uh, except for now. Now I'm at a position where I'm like, okay, everything looks amazing, everything's great. If I did some posing right now, you would see all these muscles coming through, vascularity and stuff like that. Um, but I want to get that little bit extra, that 1% extra, you know, the feathers everywhere, not just in my triceps and the sides of my quads, but I also want them, the insides of my quads. I want my adductors to be showing. I want my, um, you know, more striations through my, the midline of my chest and the upper glutes, things like that. So that's going to require more of a push, right? So that's kind of where I'm at right now in regards to my current focus, but also it gives you a bit of an outline as to how I approached this contest prep and uh, the last couple of weeks now I've just been following a meal plan I've been trying to stick, stick to a meal plan for the most part also what I will add to that is early in my prep at 2300 calories I was going out for dinner once a week um, so I was doing that I was being social I was focusing on my social life social health going out for like dates and stuff like that and eating at places that I knew I could track for the most part and just be like hey can can I have no butter when I have this you know teppanyaki, chicken teppanyaki with rice and vegetables and whatever else. So I was being mindful of calorie control, uh, but I was also being very social along that period of time as well, uh, which I felt like was very important and very healthy because this whole contest prep hasn't felt like a drag. It hasn't felt like it's taking forever, it hasn't been mind numbing, or it hasn't really affected my social life whatsoever because I was having those once per week relaxed meals. Now you could say cheat meal, but it's definitely not a cheat meal because I wasn't going out and eating pizzas and burgers and ice cream and trying to just fill up as much as I could. I was 
being flexible with my food selection, but still tracking things as I went, which is crucial, right? And, content, and uh, flexible dieting really helps with that. So the first phase was a big, a big deficit, but I was still um, being social, eating out once a week, going to the movies, doing whatever. Um, and I was doing a lot of morning walks and coffees with friends, so that was great. And then the next phase, I obviously went and partied for New Year's Eve. That was like a nice little break from the contest prep grind where I still ate really well. I still went to the gym while I was overseas. I still took protein powder with me, but I also had fun with my friends, went out for dinner with my friends, ate what they ate, uh, drank what they drank, etc. Um, so that was a great time. That was a great little mental break. And then I pushed a bit harder, my birthday, whatever I wanted. And then I pushed a bit harder. In Bali, I was very consistent, very dedicated. And I feel like I've broken up this long period of time, let's just say it's 20 weeks, into phases, right? And it's just kind of broken things up and made, made it more enjoyable, uh, made the experience a little bit um, less daunting. It's not like, oh my gosh, I still got another two months to go until I'm on stage or anything like that. And a result of that is actually me entering an earlier show. So I've got the show now in two weeks time from now, two weeks and two days actually. And that's super exciting because I was able to enter this competition because I'm ahead. I'm, I'm going to be on track ahead of time. Now, how I'm going to work this out is basically I'm going to dig a little bit harder now. I'm going to bring in some planned structured cardio as of this week, twice a week. I'm going to get on my bike. I'm going to ride my bike somewhere. Um, so I'm not on the treadmill. I'm not like I'll do the treadmill to track my steps if I need to, but I'm not actively going on a treadmill on an incline crazy fast or going on the rower or the bike or skipping thing or the Stairmaster. That kind of stuff kind of bores me. So getting on my bike, going for a bike ride twice a week, I feel like that's a really good way to burn more calories and still hit my steps target and stay on track with my nutrition. I think that's gonna be a good way to tighten up my glutes a little bit more, tighten up my hamstrings a bit more and get things going where I want them to be. So overall, there's some highs and lows in regards to energy um, you know, just mental capacity, but I've definitely focused on prioritizing things that add value to my life, having a structure and a schedule along my week as well, where I've got a routine and I kind of just tick things off across the day. I know what's important to me. I know what my priorities are and I've most definitely removed myself socially from situations that might set me back or you know, in a position where I'm surrounded by people drinking alcohol, I'm not drinking, why would I be there? Going to birthday events or whatever, where it's, you know, share plates, eat everything. I did that for my birthday and I'm done with that for now. So not too long to go now. I mean, the last competition that I'm going to be on stage for, nationals will be in seven weeks now, I think, something like that. So it's really not that much time at all. And if, and if at any point I think to myself, oh, like, you know, I'm missing out on something or I have FOMO or whatever, which hasn't happened. If that happened, what I can do, which is something I've kind of told myself and I've done it maybe like once or twice in this whole period of time, I can jump on my Instagram. I can look at my highlights of the last year when I traveled to like seven or eight countries with some friends and had the best time ever. And I can kind of relive those memories, right? And I can think to myself, I'm going to have a highlight section on my Instagram soon that I can tap through, which is gonna be of my contest prep. Now, I haven't done this yet and I should have done it already, to be honest, but of my show day and you know how things went and stuff like that, that's gonna be a great highlight too. So it's really cool to just reflect and say, okay, well, this was my focus, traveling, having fun, being social, drinking, partying, whatever, that was fun. And I'm not missing out on it because I lived that for X amount of time and now I'm living this for this amount of time and when I'm done with this, there's going to be a balance between both of these things. I'm not going to be walking around trying to be shredded constantly. We're actually going into winter here in Australia, which makes life much easier to get my, my weight back to normal, my health back to normal and things like that because uh, my sleep has definitely been affected by contest prep. Um, my energy levels obviously are lower. My food focus is not bad. It's totally fine. It sounds crazy to say this, but I'm not obsessed with food right now. I'm not thinking about food right now. I walked with a friend yesterday and they were like, oh my God, like those chips smell so good. I was like, what chips? I didn't even smell the fries, you know? So that's great. And I think that comes down to experience, time in the game, having a good lifestyle, being focused on my goals, knowing exactly what I want to achieve 
and then also having set periods of time where I eat specific foods at specific times and I've just created a taste and desire for these foods. So that's kind of the outline of how Contest Prep has been and how I kind of got from where I started to where I'm at right now. I could get into some intricate details about Contest Prep um, because I've been playing with different things uh, like in regards to electrolyte intake, in regards to um, food select, like specific food selection and how my body looks differently. Like just yesterday, I woke up really flat with really flat abs and I was like, this is great. I took a photo of it, I drank some water, waited about 20, 30 minutes, took another photo, compared these photos. I added some salt to some water, drank that, waited about 20 minutes, took some photos. I added some carbohydrates to that with some salt and some water, waited about 30 to 40 minutes or so, took another photo. And I could visually see the adjustments made by what I was tracking in and adding in. So that's really cool. I feel like my physique is kind of like a blank canvas some days of the week where I'm like, okay, cool. Let's actually see what happens when I do this, this, and this and have visual comparison. So I took photos, I took another photo, took another photo. I compared them together and I could see veins coming through my serratus and uh, my abs filling out eventually. It took some time, but they finally filled out a bit. And I was like, okay, this is interesting because you know, sometimes we, we're backstage at comp and we're like, where'd, where'd my abs go? Like they're not popping like they were popping before. Uh, and that can happen to some clients as well. And oftentimes you're just posing so much, you're flexing so much, you're wasting energy, you're losing that fullness in your muscle and you become flat. And figuring out how to counteract that or combat that that's amazing. I mean, as a coach, that's valuable information for myself as a competitor when I get on stage, but also as a coach when I work with my clients as well. So that's kind of like an update of contest prep. I've got good energy. I met a, said hi to a guy at the gym, one of the personal trainers the other day, and he's like, man, you're in really good spirits. Like, like how many weeks out are you? And, you know, I stopped and realized, I was like, you know what, this guy's right. I feel good. Life is good. And about 30 minutes later, I hit a wall and life was much more challenging. Uh, so there's highs and lows for sure, but overall, uh, this prep has been amazing. It's the best prep I've done. It's the best look that I've had ever. Um, and a few different, different things contribute to that. Um, one would be obviously being a little bit more selfish and structured with my time and my energy, um, not having a relationship basically or commitments to where I have to think about other people as much as I normally would. It's really just facilitating my clients and um, my family and, and close friends. So that makes life a lot easier because I don't have to reserve energy for other people and consider their feelings and emotions and stuff like that. So it sounds crazy, sounds selfish, but hey, that has helped tremendously. Uh, the second thing is getting ready early. So being in shape early, being consistent and committed early on. The last time I tried to compete was in 2020 and because of the time of the year, comps got canceled, didn't work out. And I was running the exact same um, system and structure that I'm doing now. So it's great to see it come like all the way through now where I'm just over two weeks out from my first show and everything has worked out amazingly. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the prep update at this point in time. Adding in the bike rides twice a week. I'm gonna do those on my non-training days and they're gonna hurt. Yeah, I did it yesterday. So I did it and I got my step count up as well. Um, and, but it was a non-training day, right? So it's fine, like I feel like it'll balance out. Like it's almost like I'm burning the calories I would have burnt from a training session, but I'm going on a bike instead. Overall calories across the week will obviously be a higher expenditure and that's what I'm going for to get more fat loss. Macros wise right now, I'm at 2100 calories across the week. That's typically what I go for with two refeed days at 3000 calories. And midweek this week, um, I pretty much did my two refeed days on Saturday and Sunday. Then I went back down to my low 2100 on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And I was super, super, super flat on Wednesday, super flat on Wednesday. I drank plenty of water. I, you know, hit my numbers, everything else, but it was so flat. And I thought to myself, this is a great opportunity to test my body and see where I'm at in regards to um, how much I can fill out because there's so much room to fill out. I can tell without a doubt. And, um, you know, the peak week is going to help with that. But 
I wanted to see how much I could fill out. So I, on Wednesday, it was pretty much the end of the day and I had hit my 2100 and I could have went to bed. I literally just could have went to sleep and thought, yep, tick off another deficit day. But I decided to play around with some things and increase my carbohydrate intake. And I ended up ending my day at 3,300 calories, uh, which is a bit higher than a normal refeed day for me. And it was all from carbohydrates, basically. So I had a whole bunch of, I wanted to keep the sodium intake um, steady. I didn't want to wake up the next day looking really, really full or puffy or anything like that. So I kind of leaned towards rice cakes and jam, rice cakes and honey. These foods don't have much sodium in them at all, just carbohydrates. I drank some water with it. And then I made some pancakes uh, with a little bit of Nutella on top, just a little bit of Nutella and I tracked that. So my fats ended up being around 10 to 15 grams higher than what my plan was for the day. My carbohydrates were 500 grams instead of like 200 grams. And my protein was about 25 grams higher than what my normal day would have been. And I woke up the next day, a little bit heavier on the scale, but definitely fuller, more muscular, and zero, zero negative outcomes visually. So I didn't look at myself and think, wow, you look blurry, you look smooth, none of that, which is amazing. And it gives me a little bit of data for my um, peak week because I have a few different plans for peak week. And I almost, almost considered eating up into this first show and increasing my calories into this first show, which will give me more fullness help to reduce some fluid retention, uh, get my body accustomed to more food as well, and just nailing that look so that when I come into contest prep or peak week, I don't have to have massive high carbs and taper down and you know all this kind of stuff. I can just progressively build um, over multiple days. And that, I thought that was a great idea and then I um, thought long and hard about it and I thought, no, let's push a little bit harder, get that little bit extra body fat off that I wanna get off for this first show. And then after this first show, I can eat up into the other shows because there'll be about two weeks between the first one and the second one, and then a week between the others. So I'm gonna push hard now, uh, pretty much another week of dieting hard, um, 2,100 calories, maybe just one or two refeeds again. And then after that, when I peak, peak week for a week, um, then I will eat up into the show and I'll progressively increase my calories going into the next shows. Now, the reason why this is gonna be so beneficial for me is because it's possible, possible that I might do a show on a Saturday and a show on a Sunday, which sounds somewhat ridiculous, but if I'm eating up into these shows, I should look very similar on both days. And that's kind of what I'm going for. It's a bit of an experiment for myself and that's what I'm gonna to try to push for. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's pretty exciting to be honest. And uh, that's, that's, again, that's my update for my contest prep. So 2100, 2,100 calories for the low days, 3,000 calories for the high days, which do not fill me out that much at all. Um, that averages my intake across the week to be around 2,400 calories or so. Um, step count has typically been around 12,000. However, now where I've added in the bike, I always also wanna to push to 15,000 steps per day again, just to really get off this last little bit of fat loss where your body is very stubborn. Um, my sleep has improved, but I have to be on top of it. So I have to do like um, making my room as dark as possible and cool. Uh, I have to do some breathing exercises. I got to play some music like soundscapes, like rain or music or calming music or things like that. I have to force myself to go back to sleep. So there are times, every single night I wake up to go to the bathroom multiple times because uh, I'm drinking so much water and because my body just wants to wake me up basically. So these things happen in contest prep, unfortunately, it's just part of the game. Uh, but that's the general outline of my structure. I'm obviously doing weight training five days a week and exciting times ahead. So life is good. That's kind of how you get from where, you, where I was, 98 kilos, 99 kilos, to where I'm at today, which is 86.8 kilos today. I was 86.4 the other day, then I did that refeed, and it bumped up my weight a bit, and now it's trending back down again. So, overall life is good. I'll do another video in the coming weeks of my peak week. Might outline that for you guys, and keep you guys in the loop with some posing practice as well. Things are looking much, much, much improved. Much improved. So, life is good. Speak to you guys soon.